Greetings and peace to you on this first Vespers, the Vigil of Palm Sunday. I hope you're well and in good health, with a sober mind and in spiritual equilibrium. We are going to begin, instead of you having to suffer through my so-so singing, blessed be God for my singing voice, but it certainly can't hold a candle to the options before us today. We're going to begin with the hymn Vexilla Regis Frodeunt and finish with it. It will be two different renditions, um, both with slightly different English translations associated with them, but nonetheless beautiful, useful, hopefully fruitful. So without further ado, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Wonderful. Absolutely beautiful. Hope you could hear that. If not, maybe uh, go back in and turn your computer up a little. My apologies that the audio levels aren't balanced well. Thus begins the lessons from the prophet Jeremiah. Be amazed at this, O heavens. 
and you, gates of heaven, be desolate, says the Lord. Two evils have my people done. They have forsaken me, the source of living waters. They have dug themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. Is Israel a slave, a bondman by birth? Why then has he become booty? Against him lions roar full-throated cries. They have made his land a waste. His cities are charred ruins without inhabitant. Yes, the people of Memphis and Tapenes shave the crown of your head. Has not this been done to you because you forsook the Lord your God at the very time when he was guiding you along the way? Responsory When I called to you, Lord, you said, Have no fear. You judged my case, and you freed me, O Lord my God. Versicle In the day of my distress I called upon you, because you have answered me. You judged my case, and you freed me, O Lord my God. continuation of the lesson. And now, why go to Egypt to drink the waters of the Nile? Why go to Assyria to drink the waters of the Euphrates? Your own wickedness chastises you. Your own infidelities punish you. Know then and see how evil and bitter is your forsaking the Lord your God, and showing no fear of me, says the Lord, the God of hosts. Long ago you broke your yoke, you tore off your bonds. I will not serve you, you said. On every high hill, under every green tree, you gave yourself to harlotry. I had planted you a choice vine of fully tested stock. How could you turn out obnoxious to me, a spurious vine? Though you score it with soap and use much lye, the stain of your guilt is still before me, says the Lord God. How dare you still plead with me? You have all rebelled against me, says the Lord. In vain I struck your children, the correction they did not take. Your sword devoured your prophets like a ravening lion. You of this generation take note of the word of the Lord. Have I been a desert to Israel, a land of darkness? Why do my people say, we have moved on, we will come to you no more. Does a virgin forget her jewelry, a bride her sash? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Responsory Heed me, O Lord, and listen to what my adversaries say. Must good be repaid with evil? that they should dig a pit to take my life? Versicle 
Remember that I stood before you to speak in their behalf, to turn away your wrath from them. Must good be repaid with evil, that they should dig a pit to take my life? continuation of the lesson. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, when Jesus drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples, saying to them, etc. The word of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A HOMILY OF ST. AMBROSE, BISHOP There is a beautiful symbolism in the fact that on leaving the Jews to take up his abode in the hearts of the Gentiles, our Lord goes up to the temple. For the true temple is that one in which the Lord is adored, not according to the letter, but in spirit. This is the temple of God, based rather on acts of faith than on a foundation of stones. Those who hate are forsaken, while those who will love are chosen. And so he comes to the Mount of Olives to plant young olive trees by his power from on high. Their mother is that Jerusalem which is above, and on this mountain is the heavenly farmer so that each one of those planted in God's house can say of himself, I am like a fruitful olive tree in the house of the Lord. Sponsory. Liars surrounded me. Without cause they scourged me. But you, my Lord and Defender, avenge me. Versicle. For distress is near, and I have no one to help me. But you, my Lord and Defender, Avenge me. Liars surrounded me. Without cause, they scourged me. But you, my Lord and Defender, avenge me. On to the new office. From the discourse of on the Palm Branches by St. Andrew of Crete. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Let us go together to meet Christ on the Mount of Olives. Today he returns from Bethany and proceeds of his own free will towards his holy and blessed passion to consummate the mystery of our salvation. He who came down from heaven to raise us from the depths of sin, to raise us with himself, we are told in Scripture, above every sovereignty, authority, and power, and every other name that can be named, now comes of his own free will to make his journey to Jerusalem. He comes without pomp or ostentation. As the psalmist says, he will not dispute or raise his voice to make it heard in the streets. 
He will be meek and humble, and he will make his entry in simplicity. Let us run to accompany him as he hastens towards his passion, and imitate those who met him then, not by covering his path with garments, olive branches, or palms, but by doing all we can to prostrate ourselves before him by being humble and by trying to live as he would wish. Then we shall be able to receive the word at his coming, and God, whom no limits can contain, will be within us. In his humility, Christ entered the dark regions of our fallen world, and he is glad that he became so humble for our sake, glad that he came and lived among us and shared in our nature in order to raise us up again to himself. And even though we are told that he is now ascended above the highest heavens, the proof surely of his power and Godhead, his love for man will never rest until he has raised our earthbound nature from glory to glory and made it one with his own in heaven. So let us spread before his feet not garments or soulless olive branches which delight the eye for a few hours and then wither, but ourselves clothed in his grace, or rather clothed completely in him. We who have been baptized into Christ must ourselves be the garments that we spread before him. Now that the crimson stains of our sins have been washed away in the saving waters of baptism, and we have become white as pure wool, let us present the conqueror of death, not with mere branches of palms, but with the real rewards of his victory. Let our souls take the place of the welcoming branches as we join today in the children's holy song. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. In the new calendar, there is a saint of the day, St. Francis of Paola, hermit. A letter by St. Francis of Paola, turn to the Lord with a pure heart. May our Lord Jesus Christ, who repays most generously, reward your labor. You must flee from evil and drive away dangers. We and all our brothers, although unworthy, Pray constantly to God the Father and to his Son, Jesus Christ, as well as to Mary, the Virgin Mother, to be with you as you seek the salvation of your souls and your bodies. Brothers, I most strongly urge you to work for the salvation of your souls with prudence and diligence. Death is certain, and life is short and vanishes like smoke. Therefore, you must fix your minds on the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, who so burned with love for us that he came down from heaven to redeem us. For our sakes, he suffered all the agonies of body and mind and did not shrink from any torment. He gave us a perfect example of patience and love. For our part, we too must be patient when things go against us. Put aside hatred and hostility. See to it that you refrain from harsh words. But if you do speak them, do not be ashamed to apply the remedy from the same lips that inflicted the wounds. In this way, you will show each other mercy and not keep alive the memories of past wrongs. Remembering grievances works great damage. It is accompanied by anger, fosters sin, and brings a hatred for justice. It is a rusty arrow spreading poison in the soul. It destroys virtue and is a cancer in the mind. It thwarts prayer and mangles the petitions we make to God. It drives out love and is a nail driven into the soul, an evil that never sleeps, a sin that never fades away. A kind of daily death. Be lovers of peace, the most precious treasure that anyone can desire. You are already aware that our sins drive God to anger, so you must repent of them, that God in his mercy may spare you. 
What men conceal is open to God. Turn to him with a sincere heart. Live in such a way that you bring upon yourselves the blessing of God, and that the peace of God our Father may be with you always. I've mixed both the first Vespers hymn and then done the matins, the morning readings in this video. So there will only be one video. I know it has been the case that I've released generally a vigil video, then a Sunday video. This is one video for both um, because I'm going to be taken with altar serving on Sunday, um, which I've been taking off from for the past month and a half to be near to my wife and newly born daughter. So please forgive me for uh, condensing, but it has seemed neat and proper that I do so. We will end with the same hymn at the beginning of the video, but this time from a men's chant uh, slightly different English translation. God bless you. God love you. God's peace to you. Please pray for me as I pray for you. Jesus,